Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be hanging out with you today. As you can see, new template. That means we must be in a new series. For the next, I don't know, several videos, we're going to be talking about DNA and all things DNA. The specific topic for the day is DNA replication. So let's get our objectives and get going. Two of them today. First one's easy. Understand the semi-conservative model of DNA replication and the more difficult one, describe the steps of DNA replication. So that's where we're going. Let's go ahead and start getting there. First thing that you kind of need to understand is what is the purpose of replication? I know this seems dumb. I know it seems intuitive, but I just want to state it to make sure that we are clear. The purpose of DNA replication is to make more DNA. So way back, we talked about the cell cycle with G1, S, G2 phases before we get to mitosis. During that S phase, this DNA replication is happening because if we're going to divide one cell into two cells, we got to have enough genetic material to go into both of them. So that's the purpose of replication. And along with that, you need to understand that the model of DNA replication we now understand is known as the semi-conservative model. Now, there was a lot of work for a long time trying to figure out, all right, we know that DNA is replicating, but is the DNA that is produced, is it new DNA, is it old DNA, is it half and half? Just want you to recognize this. When DNA is replicated, the finished products, as you can see there on the right-hand side, little diagram shows one, um, one strand up at the top, the blue one, splitting into two new strands that are a combination of blue and gold or orange or whatever you'd call that color. It is known as semi-conservative replication because half of the old DNA is conserved. You've got the new strands that come out are half old DNA and they're half new DNA. So you're holding on to part of it, thus it is semi-conservative replication. Let's talk about the goods and the process. All right, ready, here we go. So first thing, vocab term you need to know is the origin of replication. That is this place right here. The place where the replication process starts is known as the origin of replication. Now, you're going to see this two ways in school. Um, for humans and most eukaryotic organisms, you see our chromosomes represented as a long straight line, kind of like this. This place where the two strands are split from each other is the origin of replication, also known as the replication fork. In bacteria and simple prokaryotes, they have got a circular chromosome, so when their DNA is going to replicate, they actually get a bubble, called a replication bubble, and they've got two origins of replication, right there, and right there, <laughs> it looks like a face, check that out, alright, I'm done, anyway, it's been a long day, so let's talk about nuts and bolts of what's actually going on when we are replicating our DNA. First thing, first enzyme, first machine you need to know is helicase. All right, so our DNA is ready to replicate, but you can't replicate DNA until you take that strand and pull it apart. So the enzyme that is responsible for making that happen is right here, helicase. Helicase cruises down the double helix. As it's cruising down the double helix, it breaks the hydrogen bonds between the bases. So if you remember, our DNA is set up something like this where you've got your nitrogenous bases. In between the nitrogenous bases right here are hydrogen bonds. So helicase flies down the line and breaks all of these hydrogen bonds so that the two strands can separate away from one another. Once they're separated, they got to stay like that. So there's a set of proteins called single strand binding proteins and they essentially hold the two strands apart so that they don't come back together because these two bases would love to pair with one another again, but if we're going to make new DNA and have this be half of the new DNA, that be the other half of the new DNA, you got to keep those two strands separate from one another. So <clears throat> we've got our DNA separated. Helicase has unwound the whole thing. Very important part to know about the whole DNA replication process, and I talked about this in a previous video who knows how long ago, but we need to remember something on a nucleotide, which is made of our sugar, our base, and hanging on to our base is the phosphate. That is a nucleotide right there. Um, around this sugar right here, all of the carbons are numbered. Remember that this one right here is the three prime carbon. This one right here is the five prime carbon. Nucleotides can only attach five prime to three prime. So this means that this phosphate can only attach to that three prime carbon. And that's essentially the way the pattern goes, is you can only attach them in this order. 
because there is this specific order that they have to be attached, 5 prime to 3 prime, you can't have nucleotides being thrown in all willy-nilly. So to start the whole process before we start adding DNA bases, there is actually an enzyme that comes in called RNA polymerase. And what RNA polymerase does, polymerase, um, what RNA polymerase does is he puts down a short sequence of RNA nucleotides, and those RNA nucleotides essentially tell the machinery that's going to add the bases, start here. All right, so we got our RNA polymerase, and then the machines that actually add the bases will start here, and they will just fly down the road adding bases in the five prime to three prime direction. That is the only way that these things can be hooked together is five prime to three prime, and that's gonna be important in just a second. The stream only flows in one direction. So just remember, replication has to start at an RNA primer, and that is put on by RNA polymerase. So once we have got our RNA primer put in place, there is a machine that comes along called DNA polymerase. Hopefully you're seeing all of these has got have ASE on the end of it, so that means that they're an enzyme. So we've got our RNA primer. We will say that this is the primer, and here's all of our bases right here. DNA polymerase cruises down this line, matching up bases. And remember, when we are building DNA, we always go A to T and C to G. So that's the whole, pro whole purpose of DNA polymerase. Now note there are three DNA polymerases. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of each one. Just know that the purpose of DNA polymerase is to match up these base pairs and hook everything together. So DNA polymerase is actually responsible for building this strand. Um, know that the strand that is being copied is called the template strand because it is the template for the new strand of DNA that is being built. And it's also kind of cool that when you rip this DNA in half, because of the way the genetic code is set up, you can get two new strands just because one strand can be the template for building another strand. All right, hard concept. Um, DNA has a problem, and the problem with DNA is that whole five prime to three prime thing that we just talked about, all right? So because nucleotides can only be added in that five prime to three prime direction, and because our DNA is anti-parallel, so by anti-parallel I mean that this strand runs five to three, and this strand down here runs in the opposite direction. Um, because of the way bases are built and nucleotides are built, this is the way that they have to run if those nitrogenous bases are going to uh, be able to pair up with each other. But the problem with this is you've got one strand that is running in the proper direction. This strand is great. Five to three, that DNA uh, polymerase can cruise along all day long just hooking those nucleotides to each other. Not a big deal. This side has got a problem. We want replication to happen this way, so if you see our helicase right here, he's moving in this direction, which means we need to build DNA in this direction. But as far as five to three direction goes, this uh, strand right here is actually running in this direction. So we, we've got a strand running this way, but we need to replicate going this way. What do we do? Um, here's essentially what goes on. We do it in skips and jumps. So what'll happen is RNA, polymerase will hop up. He's right here. He will put down a short RNA primer. Once that RNA primer is there, you can see one right here, DNA polymerase hops in and he puts down a short segment of nucleotides until he gets to the next primer. So you got this leapfrog thing going on where RNA polymerase is dropping down primers so that DNA polymerase knows where to do his work. He hooks onto the primer and he will build in a strand of DNA right here. Then he'll jump to the next one build in a strand right there, jump to the next one. So overall, we are moving in this direction, but he is actually building the strands backwards. Now, problem is, all of these primers are left in. So there are going to be other enzymes that come in afterwards, cut out these primers, and put in the proper DNA bases, and then stick everything together all happy. So this one is the leading strand. It obviously happens much quicker than this one, which is the lagging strand, because you got to do everything backwards. You can think of it as being like an escalator. This guy is riding down the escalator, like you're supposed to be. This one 
is trying to go in the wrong direction on the escalator. He's still got to go in the same direction, but the escalator is running the wrong way. All right, so very rarely, but occasionally, there are errors made in the replication process. And when one of those errors are made, there's a couple of enzymes that do some work that is really important. Um, the first one is known as nuclease. Okay, so nuclease, he actually recognizes the problem, and when he recognizes the problem, he cuts out the piece of DNA that we want to get rid of. So let's say a A was put with a C instead of a T. He would come in, cut that base off, throw it away. Next one to come in is going to be RNA or DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase will drop the correct base into that spot. And then finally you got DNA ligase, which glues everything back together again. Um, I want you to recognize this trend. Ligase is always gluing bases back together. Polymerase is always matching up bases. If it's RNA polymerase, it's matching RNA to DNA. If it's DNA polymerase, it's matching DNA to DNA. And this is the end of the story in multiple ways. It's the end of the video, but it's also the end of our process of replication. So we talked about RNA primers. Our DNA polymerase needs that little primer as kind of a docking place to get started. Problem is, our DNA can't have those RNA primers just kind of hanging out. So there's actually a problem with DNA. Because of the fact that it needs those RNA primers, at the end of the whole process, once we are finished with our replication, that RNA primer can't stay there, so it actually gets cut off. And when it gets cut off, you leave this kind of trailing set of bases on the end. Over time, as this DNA molecule gets replicated over and over and over again, this is going to get shifted every single time because there will be a new RNA polymerase put down here, so it'll get cut out, and next thing you know, you got this much of it hanging out. Next time an RNA primer is put here, it gets cut out. Now we've got this much that's left unpaired. So there's this like general eroding that could happen. <clears throat> what our genetic code has got is there are things called telomeres or telomeres on the end of each DNA strand. And essentially what they are is a strand of buffer code. There's a bunch of extra bases there that kind of protect against the loss of actual genetic material. So over time, as the body replicates DNA over and over again, those telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until finally you do actually start to lose genes off the end. Scientists think that that is possibly what part of the aging process is, is losing genetic code off the end of the DNA as it gets replicated. Um, cells that uh, replicate all the time and need to pass on genetic material with high fidelity, like um, germ cells that make sperm and eggs, they have an enzyme called telomerase that actually repairs the telomeres so that their DNA can keep dividing without actually degrading genetic material. Now, there's a lot of material. I hope that you're able to track with all of that. I appreciate you joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. Hopefully, we'll see you again. Have a good day.